hey guys so in today's video we are going to be creating the java project and then we are going to be creating the student register student class and so we click on create java project and the project name should be apt so since we are working with the student we are going to give student register as a project name you can leave the location as default the java environment whatever you want to give mine is java 8 and you can click finish now that we have a Java project created, you can see that we have the Java lib system library and a source folder. Now source folder is where all your code is going to go. So you're going to right click on it. And you're going to go to new. And you're going to click package. Now your package naming convention is all letters should be small. So we're going to give student register all right click finish again right click on your newly created package and we're going to create the class so today we're going to be creating the student class it's going to be the basis for our project what a student uh, what a typical student should look like the structure so we get student now the naming convention for classes is always caps this class is uh, going to be critical we don't want it to be accessed by anyone else from outside the project so we're going to give it as package level access so since we're not going to be calling any functions from this class, we're just going we aren't going to be it's not going to have a driver code, so it does not need a main function. And we're going to click finish. Now you have your student register package, and under that you have your class student class created. Now a student will require a so your student will require a, a name, an ID, and subjects, correct? And we don't want these critical information to be accessed or edited by anybody other than us. So what we're going to do is we're going to give them as a private. Private. We're going to give a string type for the name. String type for the name. Uh, my bad. String type for the name. And we're going to give the name as student name. All right. We're going to give this for as default as null, not initializing any value. Same way, we're going to give private. We're going to give an integer type. And we're going to give a student. Oh, another thing, your variables should fields should start with a small letter. So that's our mistake. Student name. Similarly, student I t equals to zero for now and lastly subjects so we're going to give a private we're going to give a string array so this is the how you define an array string array called student subjects all right and this also we're going to initialize for now as null now that we have this now since these are private and need to be accessed by other classes what we're going to do is we're going to create something called getter setter methods so what getter setter methods will do is getter setter methods will get the values for these private variables so that it can be accessed by other classes of our project and other classes of project can also set some values if it's needed so we're going to right click we're going to go to source and we're going to go to generate getter setter methods. Now we want to generate getter setter methods for all of these. So we're going to just select all and we're going to click generate. So here you have it. It's created all your uh, getter set. Uh, so if you call get student name, it'll get you the student name. So here are your, all your getter setter methods generated. Now we need to create a constructor. So we create a constructor. This is going to be our default constructor. We don't need to really give any body to it. Now we're also going to create a parameterized constructor. Now to create the parameterized constructor, what we're going to do is we're going to give it first what all fields. So we're going to give it, I'm just going to copy this from here. We're going to give it a string, string type parameters that is going to take is going to take a string type student name. It's going to take an integer type student id and it's going to take a string array type 
student subjects. Alright, we can give the same name because this is in a local scope, not an issue. And first we're going to call a keyword function called super. And this calls the constructor of the parent class. We're going to now give another keyword called this. This basically refers to the current object that is calling this constructor. And we're going to give this dot student name equals my bad equals to the student name that we broke out as a parameter. Similarly, this dot student ID is equal to student ID that we got as a parameter and this dot student subjects are equal to the student subjects that came as a parameter. All right. So now we have our parameters constructor also created. And the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to override a function that is inbuilt called the two string function. Overriding means we are going to not use its default behavior, but create some custom behavior. So the two string function basically converts your objects parameter, whatever your objects information into a string. But I want to create a custom representation of my object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, type the same exact same public string to string. This is a for signature of the function that is in the parent class, the exact same we are going to type here. And then we are going to inside it, we are going to give our custom behavior. So I, for my custom behavior, what I want to do is I want to return a string, which has got my student name and colon space and close quotation marks. Now the plus is a concatenation and I want it to print my this student student name. All right. Now we also want to give our we are going to give the concatenation operator again and we are going to give a quotation in quotes we are going to write student id colon space again concatenation this dot student id and this is going to whenever i call this to question going to print the student name and student id i also want to print the student subjects but i don't want to print them one after the other i want to print them in each subject in a new line so for that what we're going to do is we're going to create another string called by the keyword string builder since strings in java are immutable which means you can't edit them change them you can only override them so we are going to create a string builder which is a mutable string we're going to give it a name subjects subject string builder and we're going to give it new new well, equals to new and string builder all right now in this what we're going to do is we're going to use another loop called for each loop so for each string type string in student subjects my id auto completes this for me but this is the notation when every every time and instead of the string i'm going to give this as subject so every time this loop runs one subject one subject from the to from this array is going to come into the subject variable and that i'm going to append to my subject string builder dot append and that i'm going to append to my subject to my string plus i will also give a new line character black slash in is the new line character so this way it will append my subject as well as a new line character which will shift it to the next line all right now since this is done and what we're going to do is we're going to concatenate quotation students subjects and student subjects colon space plus and we're going to give subject string builder all right lastly just to make it pretty we're going to give a 
backslash n here so that this is printed in new line a backslash n here as well as one right here so this will make it print pretty so this is done we've created our we've created our student class we've given the fields we've created get a set of methods we've created constructors and we've created, overridden the two string function now in the upcoming videos we're going to create the rest of the classes and see how everything fits in subscribe and press the bell icon to get notifications for our latest videos